guys look great out there. Uh, I do want to thank, um, first of all, Jim Eastell. Can we stand up and give him another round of applause? <laughs> You know, certainly, you know, the Business Roundtable has been a partner of ours, and they, uh, they do a terrific job. And James Coleman, or Jim Coleman, bring him around. You know, once again, we want to thank them for hosting uh, this economic breakfast. Um, you know, this, this is great for us. It, the, the beauty, before I get started in my remarks that I'd, you know, like to talk about, is, you know, you're lucky. Because so much has been said before I got up here that like we can like speed through this thing. <laughs> this literally is probably gonna be one of the shortest uh, state of the economy speeches you've ever heard. Um, but it is good for me to see all of you out here. Uh, so many business leaders and uh, community folks and nonprofits uh, that talk about, you know, how things are going in Prince George's County. You know, I firmly believe that in order for Prince George's County to be the best that it can be, that we have to believe that. We have to believe that each and every day. You have to believe and I have to believe and the people that we run into have to believe something that I say a lot and I started when I became county executive. And that is I started off saying, Prince George's County is the economic engine of the state of Maryland and I dare say the Washington region. <laughs> because I believe that even at a time when most people did not believe it. The beauty of working with both the Business Roundtable and EDC, as you can see, they believe it also. Now, you know, you can't get any more, any more passionate about a place than my good friend Jim Coleman. Now, he was, he was a little under. You, you feeling okay? <laughs> he was a little down today. Yeah. You know, just, just a tad bit. He, he was reserved, you know, didn't want to, you know, just, you know, just want to say, hey, hey, Prince George's County's great. You know, you know, that's, that's what he, so, and, and, and Jim Step. I say that in jest, but really what I mean is part of what's going to make this county move forward is having advocates that believe wholeheartedly in what we're doing. And that's why you're here this morning. So let's give your all, all of you a round of applause. <clears throat> because I think as either Jim or uh, our chairman of our county council said, you know, Prince George's County is the place to be. Um, now I'd like to get back to that video. And wasn't that a great video? <laughs> that guy in that video is really good looking. <laughs> He had black hair, he actually had hair. <laughs> what a vision. Walking along and imagining what Prince George's County would be like. You know, so we started, you know, we started uh, preparing for this speech by me going back and looking at some of the videos that we taped during the campaign. Because you know, when you run in, you say almost anything to get elected. <laughs> I ain't different, it was my third try. I was like, baby, my wife's like, you gotta win. You better figure out some way. <laughs> we only invested all this money. Honey, you better win. So we were like saying stuff. <laughs> we were like, please vote for daddy. <laughs> but one day when I was taking my middle child, which if you've ever driven with my middle child, I'm glad she's not here. I was taking her to school at Suitland. And we were going by what Suitland looked like at that time. And it made me think about the fact that my kids were catching the metro going down to H Street, I mean not H Street, but going down to Chinatown and spending my money. And we thought about opportunity. And we looked it up. In the Webster Dictionary, to find opportunity is a set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. Opportunity is a set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. 
from that day to this day, that has been the philosophy of this administration, to do something. Because at the time that I became county executive, the normal course of things were simply not enough. And to be honest with you, it was totally unacceptable. I knew that in order for us to truly change, we needed to take bold and innovative steps. There was a quote that we use when I was in the House of Delegates, Jim, and we were, what's the politically correct way? Getting rid of the school board? <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds like me. And people were, you know, you know, they were asking me, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And I went back to this quote from Theodore Roosevelt. And it said, in moments of great decisions, the best thing to do is the right thing. The second best thing to do is the wrong thing. The worst thing to do is nothing. Think about that. So I wanted to actually position our county to take advantage of the opportunities that I knew we had. But I also was quite aware when I took office that our government was weighed down with corruption. The crime rate was rising. We had underperforming schools. Our housing market has suffered from a crash that was nationwide. So the odds were pretty much against us. We simply were not in the best position to take full advantage of the opportunities of this great county. Figuratively speaking, we had to get our house in order in order to fully take advantage of the opportunities. So as a brand new county executive who was really eager and really wanted this job because he tried really hard to get it and he was afraid to go home to his wife and tell him he did nothing when he got there, we started doing things. We started off by strengthening our ethics policies. We created, David Iannucci, the $50 million Economic Development Fund. We focus Chief McGall like a laser on our crime. We shifted the perception of the county through marketing and communications. We retooled Gary Cunningham, our permitting system. We restructured, Dr. Maxwell, the governance of our school system. And we created the signature project that I am so proud of, our Transforming Neighborhoods, where we identified six areas in Prince George's County where all the indicators were going the wrong way. And we focused on those areas. We did something. All of these efforts were done to reposition this great county to take advantage of the opportunities that I knew were there, that I saw and you saw every day. But most importantly, an overarching reason why we did these things, because it is our job, all of our jobs, to deliver services and amenities that will make living, playing, and working in this county equal to, or I dare say, better than any place in this jurisdiction. I want to thank the Greater Prince George's Business Roundtable for publishing, if you don't have it, hold it up, for publishing their annual quality of life report. That became the Bible we looked at as we were trying to determine where we're going in Prince George's County is an important gauge of life here. Let's give them a round of applause for doing that. But in order for us to deliver a better quality of life, we needed revenue. Chairman Davis, you know, revenue. Revenue. That's right, gas. Excuse me. <laughs> we needed to fund those efforts. Economic development is important because it generates revenues so that we can better fund our schools, provide public safety, 
health and human services, transportation, and other key services. We have worked hard to retool and reposition the county so that we can grow our economy and bring in more revenue. And now opportunity is knocking, as you heard this morning. There's a lot of opportunity knocking. You might wonder why. I know I do. And then I think about it. <clears throat> Overall, crime in Prince George's County is at its lowest point in years and is decreasing. <clears throat> Our school system is improving. That is why in this year's budget that we submitted to the council, we're asking for $93 million more than we put in the budget in fiscal 27. Thank you, Dr. Maxwell. <laughs> you know, Dr. Maxwell is sitting there. One of the things we talked about since he's taken over is I said I want enrollment up and I want to see graduation rates rise. Enrollment is up and graduation rates are up in this county. And Dr. Maxwell and his team are focusing on preparing our babies, our children, as Monica Davis would say, for college and career success. That deserves a round of applause. <laughs> our permitting process, we drastically streamlined, making it more predictable and timely. Not a little thing, because one of the complaints we heard from businesses is that we're not predictable and we're not timely. That has changed. Just think about this. Unemployment is down 4.9% in our county. And we have added 7,400 more jobs since 2010. That's approximately $1 billion more in wages. Residential property sales volumes have been increasing to 16 for 16 straight months since November of 2014. The medium, and this is one that I like and my wife likes, the medium sale prices of homes are up 45% since February of 2011. These trends are a reflection that the economic strategies that have guided this administration are working. Strategies that are designed to create an economy that will position us for growth and will better position us and equip us to deal with a downturn in the future. I can't help but think about five years ago when I took office. Just think about five years ago. Prince George's County government was under an FBI investigation. Today, Prince George's County is positioned to bring the FBI headquarters to this county. To this county. Yes, Prince George's County is in demand because we laid the foundation I'm not saying that we have arrived. As you know and I know, we have a lot, of, lot, lot more work to do. We can't let up. Because I don't want us to miss a single opportunity or to be overlooked ever again. This Washington region is gonna grow in the next several years. And despite what some people might say, I think we're in a great position to get that growth right here in Prince George's County. The growth will bring in a lot of new businesses, new residents to the region. So we must continue to prepare ourselves to take advantage of that. You know, my good friend Wayne Curry used to say about Prince George's County, when he said it at the time, I, like most things, you know, Wayne said at the time, I thought, well, why the hell is he saying that? <laughs> <laughs> he was a lot smarter than that. <laughs> he said, Baker, 
we're right next to Rome. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Rome is in Italy, isn't it? <laughs> he said, we're right next to Rome. <clears throat> 15 metro stops. Acres of land. Housing stock. We're prime for growth. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> He knew what I didn't know at the time, that despite the efforts at the federal level, the only thing, the only place where you can legally print money and no, not go out of business is the federal government. He also had a vision and knew that this federal center, the Washington region, would be a place of growth. I wish I could say I had that vision, but I'm glad to say that he gave me the vision. But in order for us to be competitive, we've got to step up our game. We've got to focus on making ourselves attractive to potential businesses and families who want to live or invest in us. That means we can't take our eyes off the ball we can't let public safety, what is it, Jim, go down, up, one of those things. No fires. Make sure we put them out. Transportation, the environment. Most importantly, and you knew I was going to say it, is education. As long as I am county executive, as long as I have breath in my body, we will push harder to make our school system the best they can be. We will push them to be where they need to be. Because if, just think about it. You know, just think about it. If we move the needle in education, if we continue this progress and we invest the way that we should invest in education, all of these things that we're talking about, all of the development that's going on will not only be sustainable, that will become the new reality for us in Prince George's County. You know, I, um, I was sitting when we were doing this speech, and this is not in my notes, so I can say it and make the staff mad. <laughs> And they said, well, we're, gonna talk, we're not going to talk about education this year. We're going to talk about economic development. We're going to talk about crime. We're going to talk about health care. You know, we talked about education every year you've been county executive. And I said to them, I said, did anybody look at the Washington Post over the weekend? And they were like, what the hell is he talking about now? You know, I'd be throwing some strange stuff out there, you know. They don't know where I'm going. I said, anybody look at the Washington Post? They said, well, yeah. Does anybody see the back of the metro section of the Washington Post? They said, why? I said, well, there was a little advertisement for Howard County and its public schools. That advertisement was not about having children go to their public schools. That advertisement was about families moving to a place with a great public schools. That advertisement was about businesses moving to a place with great public schools. That advertisement was our competition. So yes, we are still talking about education because it is our calling card and it is the reason why we can talk about seven billion dollars in development projects in the pipeline in Prince George's County in opportunity. Education, public safety, but education is the leader and we will continue to talk about it. Right Dr. Maxwell? Yes, sir. You know, we're not satisfied with everything that's going on. It is our job to bring in, right Thomas? New, exciting projects. 
That's why our $50 million economic development fund that we talk a lot about, and I want to thank the council for having the vision to take the risk to do that. Let's give the council a round of applause. <laughs> it was a big risk. You take $50 million during the downturn in the economy and you invest in yourself. I'm betting on Prince George's County. I'm betting on seven. Uh, Derek, that was my line number. That's a great number. <laughs> $50 million incentive fund. We currently have 33 deals valued at $23 million that will translate into a total capital investment of $623 million. That means, yes, yes. That means we are retaining 4,000 jobs in our county and we will add 3,000 300 more jobs. That's an applause line. <laughs> We're looking forward to going to, um, they told me I, I said Vegas last year, so I can't say that. We're looking forward to going to the International Conference of Shopping <laughs> Centers. <laughs> well, we will, where we will continue to bring back deals. <laughs> just in case anybody is post here, just in case they're writing, I ain't going to Vegas. I'm going to a shopping center. <laughs> you know, I can say that tongue in cheek now. <laughs> but if you remember back, where's David? Did he there's David. David and I, he was like, buddy, he's like, boss, I got meetings for us. I said, great, I'm excited. I want people to come here. I said, well, when are they coming to visit us? He said, it's a new strategy. We're gonna go to them. <laughs> Pack your papers up and go knock on this. Excuse me, you got time to visit <laughs> to talk to us? <laughs> and we did. Somebody said it worked. Gary, David, it worked. That's why Dave and Buster's is coming here and is going to open right here in Prince George's County. <laughs> District 6. <laughs> but we have other exciting projects that are going on in the county. The Milford development in Bowie. All right. That's right. <laughs> New Town Center in Laurel. This one I have to tell you, you know, you know, I know I'm going a little long, but I have to just say this because they're they were so excited. I mean, you could you couldn't they couldn't contain themselves with the excitement. When I said to David and Thomas, I said, I got a great project. It's easy. As soon as you get them in there, it's going to happen. I said, we're going to, they said, where? Is it going to be in Bowie, Laurel, College Park? I said, no, better than that, Capitol Heights. <laughs> Capitol Heights. And they said, oh, great, boss. <laughs> the redevelopment of Kingdom Square in Capitol Heights. Right. That's going to anchor a major thoroughfare in Prince George's County. And one that's near and dear to my heart, because my son works along there, the Gateway Arts District on Route 1. Is anybody in down there? Isn't that great? <laughs> Westphalia. I think that's Westphalia. Is that District 6? <laughs> Upper Marlboro? Uh, no, that's some. Did someone say that? That's <laughs> Cantera and Laurel. And the brand new, soon to open, Brad from Whole Foods and Retail in Riverdale Park. Bradley, we didn't forget you. And this one really is near and dear to my heart, and I'm going to talk about it later on. The New Town Center at Suitland. The New Town. Hey, we're going to talk about this. Yes, things are happening in Prince George's County because we prepared ourselves to seize the opportunities. I don't think any of us, I know I couldn't have imagined that we would have made this, pro this much progress this fast. I knew it was going to take me eight years, which is why I had the eight-year plan. If I don't know it was going to be this quick, I had a five-year plan. <laughs> Whether it's the anticipation of the Purple Line that's coming in, the Regional Medical Center, MGM National Harbor, or the possibility of the FBI coming here. We are in demand. 
And I have to say, you know, when I get with my other colleagues and county executives and the mayor in Baltimore, and I said, damn, it feels pretty good to be in demand. <laughs> You know, we are inching closer and closer to the destination that I talked about in that inaugural address two years ago. But we're inching closer and closer thanks to the employees of Prince George's County, the County Council, and the great people of this great county. We have been able to maintain our triple A bond rating over these five years, and that definitely is an applause. <laughs> we did it by expanding our commercial tax base, and yes, making very tough decisions with limited resources. As a result of those decisions, though, over these last five years, we're experiencing an increase in our revenues because of the rising property values in Prince George's County and our expanded commercial activities. This new revenue is helping us shrink our deficit. In fact, the budget that we handled this year, I couldn't believe it, I thought it was a joke, an April Fool's joke, um, even though I had to submit my budget in March. The 2017 budget was the smallest deficit that I faced since I've been county executive. I just knew they were gonna pull the rug from under me. I was gonna be like Charlie Brown. You work it. <laughs> you work it. So that's why we were able to, because of the rising re values in our homes and our, and our commercial activities, we were able to do that. So this year, because of that, we're gonna be able to invest more into opportunities. Areas that have the potential to grow, but need like a little jump start for that growth. One of those places, Karen tells. Yes, sir. Is Suitland. Then y'all know I love Suitland. My three babies went to Suitland High School and I drove there longer than I've driven any place else. And every time I would drive through there, like you saw in the commercial, I would just think about two things. You know, really one thing. I would think about Wayne Curry and what he said and how close we were to the District of Columbia and how many assets that are there. As somebody who worked on economic development in D.C., when I started on U Street, it didn't look like U Street. There was a big metro breaking up the street there. And you're trying to convince businesses to come in when you couldn't even walk through there. But Suitland had the metro sy system already there. The Census Bureau with 8,000 employees. A great housing stock. And a stone, yes, smart woman a stone's throw away from the District of Columbia. The only thing we needed over there was redevelopment to really bring excitement to it. Imagine walkable, sustainable, transit-oriented, mixed-use development, a town center with 700 housing units and seven and, and 76,000 square feet of retail. Imagine a Suitland performing arts venue, <laughs> music, visual arts, the hub of the community right there. If you can't imagine it, go to downtown Silver Spring. That's why, Howard Ways, we're pleased that you and Peter Shapiro, the Revenue Authority and the Redevelopment Authority are taking the lead on developing the Suitland Manor. That is also why we are investing $50 million in infrastructure and property acquisitions so that we can build the Suitland Town Center. 22 acres site, half a mile from the Suitland Metro, from the Suitland Metro and the Census Bureau. You're welcome. <laughs> we aim to please. Thank you, That's right. So, for everybody in the room, don't tell anybody outside this room. You gotta listen real close. Inside tip, don't tell anybody. 
invest in Suitland. Enough said. <laughs> Now you've heard me, I'm sorry, you have heard Councilmember Davis, my notes say you've heard me, <laughs> talk about downtown Largo. Say it again. Downtown Largo. <laughs> the place we envision as a hub for health care and government in Prince George's County. That is why with uh, Jay Walker still here? Jay still here? He's not. Let's give Jay and the legislature a round of applause for, for guaranteeing that our hospital will be built with $650 million for the Regional Medical Center. That puts us one step closer to that significant anchor of downtown Largo. Plus, we will move government operations there, including the office of the county executive, making it more convenient for residents. Over the past four years, we have invested $40 million in Largo area to purchase three new buildings, which includes the purchase of what I hope to be the new county government center. And wouldn't it be nice to name that new county, not that I have any sway in this, Governance Center yes. after somebody who will be beating his chest and I'm sure he's beating it now. Yes. Wayne Keith Curry. Right. I'm just saying. Thank you. He, he would like that. He, he likes big things. <laughs> you know, our development in, in Largo is deliberate. Because we want to send a signal to businesses and families that we're serious about downtown Largo. That we're committed to creating it. We're committed to creating a great place to work, transact business, live, and shop. We have an opportunity to make downtown Largo our version of Rockville with metro access and walkable landscape for workers, residents, and customers. The real excitement will start in 2017 when the county's investment in downtown Largo will become more evident. I've already seen new apartments, buildings, and hotels, and other businesses coming, and there will be more, I guarantee you. I am confident that our investment will generate interest that will make this one of the hottest places, one of the hottest places or the hottest, the hottest. place? The, the hottest, hottest place in the state. <laughs> <laughs> but there's more. New Carrollton, a major transportation hub on the eastern seaboard. Mark Train, Metro, Amtrak, 495, Route 50 all flow through New Carrollton. Hundreds and thousands of commuters and business travel through New Carrollton every single day. And with the Purple Line coming, we will see new pockets of economic activities from the New Carrollton Metro Station to Bethesda. Thank you once again, County Council, for putting the money in and committing to the Purple Line. Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. We have the opportunity to create our very own Union Station right here in Prince George's County, not far from where I live. Imagine apartments, new offices, retail, as well as hotels right off the Beltway. They're already planning two high-end apartment buildings with ground floor retail just on the northeast side of the Metro Station where the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development are located. You should have saw my wife when I read that part to her. She was like, oh, honey, great place. And it's anchored by a company like 2U, 
an innovative technology firm projected to grow to over a thousand employees in the next few years. New Carrollton has the potential to become filled with activities. Now the vision that I've laid out for you are not just simply concepts and what ifs. That was eight years ago, or almost eight years ago when I was running. What I'm sharing with you are concrete economic strategies and a vision that we are working hard to execute. Now, you know you couldn't get through a speech unless I found some John Quin Kennedy quote. <laughs> and I did. The most ideal approach to advance is the way of opportunity. This is the philosophy that has guided us to seize opportunity and advance our county. We are investing in these areas of opportunities to make sense that make sense because they create economic activity and will generate funds. Is what I'm talking about bold? Yes. Is it possible? Hell yes. Absolutely. That is why the budget that we submitted to the council and we asked them to look at, invest in these groundbreaking proposals that I've outlined. <coughs> Investments that will jumpstart downtown Largo. Investments that will create new energy in Suitland. Yes, <laughs> Investments that will make New Carrollton a vibrant transportation hub. It is exciting times, an exciting moment in history for us in Prince George's County. That is because we have taken the steps to prepare ourselves for the opportunities that lie ahead. Now, many of you know that last year about this time, I was painfully trying to run the Boston Marathon. <coughs> and I do mean painful. And you know, when you're running a marathon, you know, it's not the beginning that's the hardest part. Really, the hardest part is those last three miles. We got to mile 23, and I was about to die. And so I was running with Tony Grimes from, from the county, and we're coming down this stretch. But in order to, in the Boston Marathon to finish, you come down a stretch and then you turn a corner. And down that stretch, for the first time, you don't see people. And I was starting to walk and he said, no, we got to finish strong, ain't no time to walk. I said, dude, I don't see no finish line. <laughs> and my back hurts. I said, run ahead. <laughs> Tell me if the finish line's around the corner. Because if it ain't, I ain't running. And he ran ahead and he said, the finish line is over there. I see it. I said, I don't believe you. He said, come on. It's raining. I'm freezing. I hate everybody. I hate this idea. And I very slowly, like the tortoise that I am, run up to where he is. And I said, if you're lying, I'm going to And I get there, and I turn the corner, and I hear all this yelling and screaming and cheering, and everybody's there, and you're excited, and you're pumped up, and you forget that you've just run 23 miles, and you got three more to go. And I was like, yes, it ain't time to slow down. The energy gets you. You build upon and feed upon what is happening. That's Prince George's County. That is the challenge that I have for you today. It ain't time to stop. The finish line is around the corner. We can see it. People were cheering. So today, I submit to you that the state of the economy 
of Prince George's County is strong and sits on a firm foundation. God bless you and God bless Prince George's County.